Allô 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 Greg Farrell is the head of a wealthy dynasty used to mixing with the country's elites. The Farrells dominate Tasmania with their boutique hotels, two casinos, bottle shops and the real money spinner, an exclusive gambling licence. They seem to uh, still be able to call the shots uh, and that has always been the case uh, in Tasmania. What the Farrell family want, uh, they get. For more than 20 years, every poker machine in the state has bolstered the Farrell family's wealth, now at an estimated $463 million. Federal paid nothing uh, for the licence. Uh, it was valued at the time as being worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and it was, it was, it was virtually handed to them. But now that dominance is under threat from an unlikely player. 2,000 plus compulsive gamblers in Tasmania that play pokies. It doesn't all go well for those individuals and it doesn't all go well for those around them. David Walsh is the wealthy founder of Mona, the museum of old and new art, who made his money as a professional punter. His unique art gallery has become so popular, the term the Mona effect has been coined to describe the legions of tourists who flock to it. But Mona is losing $6 million a year, and that's increasing fast. We've scaled up our operations and our um, exhibitions and stuff, so it's a good bit more than $6 million now. Even though the visitors are mainly in the state, they pay, our income's gone up, but so is our expenses. I probably need to cover about $10 million. Well... To cover his losses, he wants to build a hotel and high-roller boutique casino, which he's called Monaco. The hotel would run out here and the casino would spread out down, to, down the hill a bit in front of the hotel. It'll draw money, but it won't draw many people. I, so I probably need less than 50 customers a year. So this is a very strange model. But standing in his way is the CEO of Federal Group, Greg Farrell, who holds Tasmania's exclusive gambling licence. The Tasmanian government tried to broker a deal. Mr Farrell um, has a deed, a contract if you like, in place with the state of Tasmania. Um, it was appropriate that I wrote to him to see whether or not he was prepared to uh, provide an opportunity for, a, an, uh, for Mr Walsh to have a casino before 2023 and uh, under what terms. According to David Walsh, Greg Farrell was happy for his casino to go ahead on one condition. The state government extend the family's poker machine monopoly beyond 2023. And that's when the trouble started. Federal were potentially linking supporting a Monaco licence to an extension of a monopoly. Then I did contact them. Did Greg Farrell confirm that that was what he was trying to do? That's not how he put it, of course. He said that he'd put a proposal in to government before this had come up, but once this came up, he'd included it. The Tasmanian community didn't get fair market value for the monopoly licence, and now Tasmania apparently is being denied um, a really good opportunity to expand the tourism sector, again because of this bad contract. You got to know that Last month, in an anti-Pokies blog post, Walsh declared he was pulling out of negotiations to stop Farrell from using him to expand his poker machine empire. The successful gambler has a problem with poker machines. Knowing what to keep. And this is the word I use. It's, um, pokies work in a different way than other gambling. The companies that design these poker machines, pokey machines, whatever, you want, design them in a way that maximises the psychological reinforcement. It's not about the thrill of winning, it's about being in a zone and having the world close out to you. Your local area of Glenorchy is where the most money is put through poker machines in the state. Do you think that's something that resonates around here? There's a high penetration of the machines. Just driving up the road here towards Claremont, I see three places in a few minutes. You know, it's... The community is affected by problem gambling. The correlation between 
Poker machines in low-income earning areas seems to be positive and it clearly should be negative. Has there been any backlash from you going public? It's bloody amazing. I walk down the street, people pull up in cars. I've not had any negative feedback. Everyone's saying, go you good thing. This is great. You know, the pokies have been bringing down Tassie for too long. It's nice to see someone making a stance, offering to buy me a beer, offering me lifts. Greg Farrell hit back, threatening to pull $100 million of investment, including a long-promised hotel at Port Arthur, unless he gets certainty over his gambling licence. Now they're talking about investments like Port Arthur and a, and a you know, an upmarket facility hotel at Port Arthur. They acquired the site in 2004 and, you know, I see in the media that in 2006 they were appearing, suggesting a likely start to construction in 2007. You know, 2007 is long past. Why did it not happen? Well, were they short of cash or did they hold it over until they could use it as a, another negotiating ship? The showdown is a major dilemma for the state government, which hasn't decided whether the next gambling licence will go out to tender. Who's making the decisions? Why, you know, is Federal making the decision? I certainly don't think I've got the right to make the decision. I would, think it, I would have thought it was the government and the community, but I don't seem to see it playing out that way. Federal Group declined an interview with 7.30. In a statement, the company denied it has any undue influence over the awarding of gambling licences and said it's a matter for the Tasmanian government. It also emphasised the positive impact of its multi-million dollar investments across the state. The government um, uh, is not going to uh, uh, be, is pressured by either Mr Farrell or Mr Walsh in respect of uh, what's going on at the moment. Even without a casino licence, David Walsh is pushing ahead in building Monaco. But he's warning the Tasmanian government that Greg Farrell isn't the only one that needs a deal. If I build the casino but can't operate it, I can see a time when it creates quite a bit of conversation about the way we do de development in this community, so we'll see. Uh, that, that, that's, that's probably what will happen, unless I run out of money.